just changed mine to fresh berries. You should keep it. If you need it, just let me know.
exhort, let them exhort the hosts of heaven. Exhort, let angel ministers of God exhort. Let the trumpet of salvation sound aloud our mighty king's triumph. Be glad, let earth be glad as glory floods her. A blaze with light from her eternal king. Let all corners of the earth be glad, knowing an end to gloom and darkness. Rejoice, let Mother Church also rejoice, arrayed with the lightning of his glory. Let this
My dear friends in Christ, we have begun our solemn vigil. Let us listen to the word of God with open hearts 
Listen to the history of our salvation. We hear how God in times past saved his people and in these, the last days, has sent us his son, Jesus, as our redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this paschal work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. I invite you now to extinguish your candles and be seated as together we listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless wasteland, and darkness covered the abyss, while a mighty wind swept over the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. God saw how, saw how good the light was. He then separated the light from the darkness. He called the light day, and the darkness God called night. Thus evening came, and morning followed the first day. Then God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate one body of water from the other. And so it happened. God made the dome, and it separated the water above the dome from the water below it. God called the dome the sky. Evening came, and morning followed the second day. Then God said, let the water under the sky be gathered into a single basin so that the dry land may appear. And so it happened. The water under the sky was gathered into its basin and the dry land appeared. God called the dry land the earth and the basin of water the sea. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth vegetation, every kind of plant that bears seed, and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with its seed in it. And so it happened. The earth brought forth every kind of plant that bears seed and every kind of fruit tree on earth that bears fruit with the seed in it. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the third day. Then God said, Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate day from night, let them mark the fixed times, the days, and the years, and serve as luminaries in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth. And so it happened. God made two great lights, the greater one to govern the day the lesser one to govern the night. And God made the stars. He set them in the dome of the sky to shed light upon the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. Evening came and morning followed the fourth day. 
Then God said, Let the water teem with an abundance of living creatures, and on the earth let birds fly beneath the dome of the sky. And so it happened. God created the great sea monsters and all kinds of swimming creatures with which the water teems and all kinds of winged birds. God saw how good this was. And God blessed them saying, Be fertile, multiply, and fill the water of the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. Evening came and morning followed the fifth day. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth all kinds of living creatures, cattle, creeping things, and wild animals of all kinds. And so it happened. God made all kinds of wild animals, all kinds of cattle, and all kinds of creeping things of the earth. God saw how good it was. Then God said, Let us make humans in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created humans in God's image. In the image of God, they were created, male and female. God created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth and every tree that has seed bearing fruit on it to be your food and to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground, I give all the green plants for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything that was made, and God found it very good. Evening came, and morning followed the sixth day. Thus, the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work God had been doing, God rested on the seventh day from all the work God had undertaken. The word of the Lord.
Let us stand to pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are wonderful in the ordering of all your works. May those you have redeemed understand that there is nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, The outcry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen how the Egyptians are oppressing them. Now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. When it was reported to the king of Egypt that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his servants had a change of heart about the people. What in the world have we done, they said. We have released Israel from our service. So Pharaoh harnessed his chariots and took his army with him. Now Pharaoh was near when the Israelites looked up and saw that the Egyptians had set out after them. Greatly frightened, the Israelites cried out to the Lord, But the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. And you lift up your staff and with hand outstretched over the sea, split the sea in two that the Israelites may pass through it on dry land. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord swept the sea with a strong east wind throughout the night and thus turned it into dry land. When the water was thus divided, the Israelites marched into the midst of the sea on dry land with the water like a wall to their right and to their left. The Egyptians followed in pursuit. All Pharaoh's horses and chariots and charioteers went after them right into the midst of the sea. In the night watch, just before dawn, the Lord cast through the column of the fiery cloud a glance that threw the Egyptian force into a panic. And God so clogged their chariot wheels that they could hardly drive. With that, the Egyptians sounded the retreat before Israel because the Lord was fighting for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord told Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea that the water may flow back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their charioteers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea flowed back to its normal depth. As the water flowed back, it covered the chariots and the charioteers of Pharaoh's whole army, which had followed the Israelites into the sea. Not a single one of them escaped. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord who is covered in what 
Let us stand to pray. O oh God, by the light of the New Testament, you have unlocked the meaning of wonders worked in former times so that the Red Sea prefigures the sacred font and the nation delivered from slavery foreshadows the Christian people. Grant that all nations obtaining the privilege of Israel by merit of faith may be reborn by partaking of your spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord. All you who are thirsty. Who are thirsty. thirsty. Are thirsty. Come. 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 Come, Come to the water. To water. You who have no money. Come. Come. Come, Come by, by grain, grain and eat. And eat. Come without, money. without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money for what is not bread, your wages for what does not satisfy? Only listen to me. Listen. 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 Only, Only listen, listen to, me. to me. And you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Pay attention. Pay attention. And come. Come. Come, come, come to, me. to me. Listen. 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 Listen that you may have life. Have life. Life. Have life. 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 Seek, the, Seek Lord. the Lord. Seek the Lord. While he may be found. Call upon Call God. Call upon God. While he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and sinners their thoughts let, let them, them turn, turn to the lord, lord to find mercy. mercy 
Let them turn to our God. Our God. Who is generous in forgiving. Generous, generous in, forgiving. in forgiving. Just as from the heavens, the rain and snow come down and do not return till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful. Giving seed to the one who sows and bread to the one who eats. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. Goes forth from my mouth. So shall my, so word, shall be my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. It shall, it shall not, not return, return to me empty. empty. But shall do what, ple what, what pleases, pleases me. Achieving, achieving the, the end, end for which, for which I, I sent, sent it. it. The word of the Lord. water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Indeed, God is my Savior. I am confident and sure. He is my courage. I am not afraid. My strength comes from the Lord. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Give thanks and praise to the Lord. From the fountains of salvation, you will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Sing praise to God, proclaim his glory. Deeds. Sigh and shout for joy and fall on your knees. Fall on your knees. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. You will draw water joyfully from the springs of salvation. Let us stand to pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sole hope 
of the world. By the preaching of your prophets, you unveiled the mysteries of this present age, graciously increased the longing of your people, for only at the prompting of your grace do the faithful progress in any kind of virtue. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel lived in their land, they defiled it by their conduct and deeds. Therefore, I poured out my fury upon them because of the blood that they poured out on the ground and because they defiled it with idols. I scattered them among the nations, dispersing them over foreign lands. According to their conduct and deeds, I judged them. But when they were scattered among the nations, there too my holy name was profaned, because it was said to them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to leave the Lord's land. So I have relented because of my holy name, which the house of Israel profaned among the nations. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord, Not for your sakes do I act, house of Israel, but for the sake of my holy name. I will prove the holiness of my great name, profaned among the nations, in whose midst you have profaned it. Thus the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God. For I will take you away from among the nations, gather you from all the foreign lands, and bring you back to your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you to cleanse you from all your impurities, and from all your idols I will cleanse you. I will give you a new heart and place a new spirit within you, taking from your bodies your stony hearts and giving you hearts of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you live by my statutes, careful to observe my decrees. You shall live in the land I gave your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. As a doe longs for running water, so do I long for you, my soul.
Let us stand to pray. O God of unchanging power and eternal light, look with favor on the wondrous mystery of the whole church and serenely accomplish the work of human salvation which you planned from all eternity. May the whole world know and see that what was cast down is now raised up what had been, become old is made new, and all things are restored to integrity through Christ, just as by him they came into being, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. My friends, through the Hebrew scriptures, we have heard the story of our salvation unfold. Our Lenten fast has ended. I invite you to turn to page five in your order of worship as we raise our voices and sing the praises of our saving God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good
Let us pray. O oh God, you make this most sacred night radiant with the Lord's resurrection. Stir up in your church a spirit of adoption so that renewed in body and mind, we may render you undivided service. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body might be done away with, that we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then, we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks, the Lord is good. For God's love endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, See, God's love endures forever. right hand is lifted high. God's right hand has struck with power. I shall live, I shall not die. And declare God's wondrous deeds. stone though once denied oh, has become the cornerstone oh, by the Lord has this been done oh, truly wondrous in our eyes oh, The Lord be with you. And with your 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, approached, rolled back the stone, and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his his clothing was white as snow. The guards were shaken with fear of him, and became like dead men. Then the angel said to the women in reply, Do not be afraid. I know that you are seeking Jesus, the crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised just as he had said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Then they went away quickly from the tomb, fearful yet overjoyed, and ran to announce this to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them on their way and greeted them. They approached, embraced his feet, and did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Those are the best seats in the house because I get to look at your faces and lights go on. Your faces lighten up. It's just been uh, pretty, it's wonderful to watch you. Uh, Four weeks ago, four weeks ago tomorrow at the first scrutiny, I spoke to you elect and to you candidates. And I thanked you for your witness uh, to the rest of us uh, by your choice to become members of and at once broken and glorious church. In your choice, uh, which you and all of us here tonight affirm with you, uh, in that choice you play the role of John the Baptist. We see Jesus, the Lamb of God, in your lives, at least the effects of him in your lives and uh, by being here tonight. And I spoke to those of you, the rest of us, uh, who are in the pews and at home, Um, who despite being disappointed by or hurt by or angry with this at once broken and glorious church, your steadfastness in your Catholicism is a witness to your relationship with the Lord and it's a reminder that all of this only makes sense with Jesus. So it it was a you and an us four weeks ago. But tonight... It becomes just an us. We become one tonight. All of you become one with us, united in the waters of the one baptism and gathered by Jesus, different grains from different hills, baked into one bread, into the one body of Christ at the one table of the Eucharist. The brokenness, the division of the church, of our world, our relationships, the division and brokenness of our hearts, those are real and they will remain. It's the human condition. But they are not the last word. They're not the last word. The last word is hope. The last word is resurrection from death. The last word is communion. Tonight we go down into the waters of baptism. As St. Paul reminds us, we are buried into the death of Jesus. And as he was raised from the dead, so we are raised to newness of life. Never, usually not on our own timetable, but always to new life. And we're blessed with the fire of the Holy Spirit, and we feast at the table behind me. 
And you, my dear friends, who are baptized tonight, received into the church tonight, complete your Catholic sacraments this evening. You are to be, and all of us, are sent forth into the world to be light in the darkness, to be bread that feeds a hungry world, to be mercy that binds wounds, to be the body of Christ. My sisters and brothers, we welcome you with great joy tonight. Thank you for joining us, and God bless you. I invite now Mary Romo to come forward to join me in calling forth our elect. Father Greg, and members of the St. Ignatius Parish community, it is my privilege to present to you those who have been preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation. We have prayed over them. Our Archbishop has received them, and they are now ready to be baptized. I invite these elect, with your sponsors, to come forward as I call your name and stand behind the light of the Paschal candle. Henry Chen and your sponsor, Rick Votava. Norm Gunn and your sponsor, Nick Rokio. Mary Lomax Garrett Betsy with your sponsor, Tracy Patton. And Casey Pond with your sponsor, Gavin Besson. Ellen Sal, your sponsor, Mary Quip. And Justin Tidwell, with your sponsor, Scott Ballantyne. My dear friends, what is it that you ask of God's church this evening? I don't think they could hear you at the back. <laughs> there you go. Let us ask God through the intercession of the saints to shower down his mercy upon our elect. God has brought them to this moment and granted them the, des the desire and strength to follow Jesus Christ. May God fill them with new life in the Holy Spirit. I invite those of you in the pews to stand, turn to page nine in your order of worship, and let us pray together.
My sisters and brothers, let us ask God to bless this water, that it become for us the fountain of new life for these elect and a source of renewal for all. Father, the visible signs of this world reveal to us the wonders of your unseen power. And tonight, we celebrate your gift of water, which through baptism becomes a sign of your gracious power. At the dawn of creation, your spirit breathed on the waters, granting them the power to bring forth life. Through the great flood, water put an end to sin so that goodness could begin anew. Through the Red Sea, you led a holy people out of slavery to set them free. In the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Your son willed that water and blood should flow from his side as he hung upon the cross. And after his resurrection, he sent his disciples to go out to all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Merciful Father, look now with love upon your church and unseal for us these baptismal waters. We ask you, almighty God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, to give to this water of this font the grace of your only begotten Son. With your Son, send down the Holy Spirit so that all whom you have created in your likeness may be cleansed from sin, and may all who are buried with Christ in the death of baptism rise with him to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Invite the community to be seated. And now, my dear elect of God, I invite you to renounce the power of darkness, to make your profession of faith, and to declare before us your desire to follow Jesus Christ. If you so desire, please respond, I do, to each of the following questions. Do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by it? I do. Do you reject Satan, the author of sin and the prince of darkness? I do. Do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of, the heaven, of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith, the faith of our church. Is it your desire to be baptized into this faith? Henry, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Norman, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mary, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There we go. Casey, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Justin, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ellen, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come to the Water can be found on page 11 of your order of worship.
Before we renew our own baptismal promises, I would like to call forth those among us who have already been baptized in other Christian communities and who now desire to embrace the traditions and the faith of the Catholic Church. As your names are being called, please come forward with your sponsors. Sarah Catalano with your sponsor, Kevin Merrill. Terry Guyton with your sponsor, Sophie Socano. Katrina Inch with your sponsor, Christine Fleming. Bayard Miller with your sponsor, Sarah Merrill. Becky Mitchell with your sponsor and husband, Paul Hines. And Nils Dyson with your sponsor, Harry Hudson. My sisters and brothers, I invite all of you to stand as you continue to have your candles lit. Through the Paschal mystery, we have buried, been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in the newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded with these candidates before us, let us all renew the promises of our holy baptisms by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask all of you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? I do. Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? I do. Do you reject Satan, the author of sin and the prince of darkness? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Amen. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Amen. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, Keep us by his grace in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So to recall our own baptisms, Deacon Eddie and I will process through the church with holy water, just blessed here tonight from our, in our Easter font. As we do, we invite you to uh, recall your own baptisms. And as the water hits you, we make the sign of the cross, recalling that moment.
invite you to be you in the pews to be seated with your candles lit, please. So my dear friends, you have been asked, you have asked to be received into full communion with the Catholic Church. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you've made this decision after careful thought and much prayer. You will now be one with us at the table of the Eucharist, the sign of our unity. I invite you all now, each of you, to profess the Catholic faith. I believe and profess to be revealed by God all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims. I believe and profess to be revealed by God all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims. I believe and profess to be revealed by God all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims. I believe and profess to be revealed by God all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims. I believe and profess to be revealed by God all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims. I believe and profess to be revealed by God all that the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims. My dear sisters and brothers, in the name of Jesus Christ, we receive you into the Catholic Church. By God's loving, kind, God's loving kindness has brought you here. May the love and charity you find here feed you and always keep you strong in your faith. A round of applause for our newly received Catholic. My dear friends, you have clothed yourselves in Christ and become a new creation. Enlightened by his grace, always walk as children of light. Keep the flame of your faith burning so that when the bridegroom comes, you may be ready to greet him. And now, Father Greg, there are also some among us, our Catholic brothers and sisters, who have completed their formation for the sacrament of confirmation and who stand ready to join our newly baptized neophytes and those who have joined us in full communion for the celebration of this special sacrament. As I call your names, I ask you to come forward with your sponsors, Adrian Hernandez and your sponsor, Dustin Fromm, Ruby Luna, and your sponsor, Sister Teresa Moser. Lilia Martino, your sponsor, Mary Torres. Sophia Morales, and your sponsor, Manuel Perez Garcia. Axel Perez, and your sponsor, Jessica Carreras. Henry Van Bagenberg, and your sponsor, Anna Reed. Elijah Weber, and your sponsor, Donald Connell. And Carlin Rothenbuehler, and your sponsor, Nicole Kakakunda. My dear friends, you have prayed and prepared to, to complete your Christian initiation through the sacrament of confirmation. Tonight we pray with you and these, your sisters and brothers, to receive the fullness of the Spirit. I invite you to extinguish your candles as we ask God to shower upon these sisters and brothers of ours the abundant gifts of the Holy Spirit.
My friends, uh, you are with us, as I refer to all of us, the body of Christ, members of the body of Christ. And tonight, you will experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit sent by the Lord Jesus at Pentecost and given to the baptized through the ministry of the Catholic Church. The power of the Holy Spirit makes us more like Jesus Christ and fortifies us as members of his body. I invite the assembly to stand and if you I, and invite you to if you're on the aisle move to the middle and place your hand on one of the people being confirmed tonight the sponsors have their hands so just and come to the middle and then if you can't touch them put your hand on someone else let's make this a community event let them feel the power of our support and love or you can extend your hand in a gesture of blessing toward the middle aisle as we ask God to pour out the Holy Spirit upon them. All-powerful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon these to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of right judgment and of courage, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and the spirit of awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite the assembly to be seated again.
lead us to the water can be found on page 13 of your order of worship. of applause for our newly confirmed. <laughs> Please stand. In the radiant splendor of this holy night and these marvelous events, let us call out to the Lord whose mighty deeds we have just witnessed. Our response will be, risen Savior, hear our prayer. For God's people throughout the world, for this faith community gathered around fire, water, and table, for those who were lost but have been found, for those who are still seeking. We pray to the Lord, risen Savior, hear our prayer. For Henry, Norman, Casey, Ellen, Justin, Mary, and for all who have been newly baptized into the death and resurrection of Christ this holy night. For Sarah, Terry, Katrina, Bayard, Becky, Nels, who have publicly professed their new faith in the midst of this assembly, and for all who join the church this day. For Adrian, Axel, Henry, Elijah, Ruby, Lilia, Sophia, and Carlin, whose hearts have been filled by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord, Lord risen Lord, Savior, Savior, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For an end to the war in Ukraine, 
that peace be achieved through diplomatic means and that those suffering for lack of food, shelter, and safety be swept up into the loving arms of our mother. We pray to the Lord, risen, risen Savior, Savior, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. For the sick and the suffering, for the forgotten and neglected, and for all those who have died, that they enjoy the brilliant vision of the risen Christ. We pray to the Lord, risen, risen Savior, Savior, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God of glory, fill your church with the power flowing from Christ's resurrection, that we as the beginnings of a renewed humanity risen to new life with Christ may be present in the midst of the world redeemed by your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I invite you all to be seated. If we could have a few volunteers to head to the back of the church to help with the collection, we'd be grateful. The work, gospel work of our community is the work of all our hands, so thank you for your generosity in advance.
Please stand and pray with me, my sisters and brothers, that this sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O Lord, accept the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this night, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. O God, you are indeed holy and to be glorified. You love the human race and you always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your, ch your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. And so having called us to your table, O oh God, confirm us in unity so that together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, deacons, women and men who minister in your name and your entire people. As we walk your ways with faith and hope, may we strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Ignatius and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together let us raise our voices in song as we pray the prayer that unites the Christian family throughout the world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, may we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith, hope, and charity of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
So uh, we'll join those of you who are at home in the prayer for spiritual communion. It might be in your order of worship, so if it's there, if you who are in the pews would join us. Dear Jesus, we believe that you are fully present in the bread that is blessed and broken and in the wine that is blessed and poured out in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Thank you for making us a part of you, the mystical body of Christ the Church. Renew in us your sacrificial presence and let us be united with you at this moment so that in all our thoughts, words, and actions we may represent you and love others as you love us. My sisters and brothers, look here. Behold, the Lamb of God the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us receive what we are, and may we become what we receive, the body of Christ. Amen.
as we are united through the body and blood of the Lord, join together in singing, There's a Wideness, which can be found on page 17 of your order of worship.
O Lord, pour out on us the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this paschal sacrament one in mind and in heart. Through Christ our Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for all of us, for all of you, for helping us to pray so beautifully this evening. I know it's a little bit late, but uh, we need to express our, our gratitude tonight. We prayed so beautifully throughout uh, all of Holy Week, beginning last Palm Sunday and continuing through these uh, holy days. And we owe so much to so many, again, who helped us to pray so beautifully. I'd like to thank all of you uh, who are here tonight, who have prepared for weeks, uh, volunteered for weeks, contributed your time and your ideas, your preparation, ironing and setting up and taking down, lighting candles and cleaning and vacuuming, arranging flowers and palm branches, uh, on and on it goes. I'd like to say a special thanks to the Liturgical Environment Planning Committee. Um, to go from Palm Sunday to Holy Thursday to Good Friday to Easter, it takes a lot, a lot of hours, a lot of work. So. Um, transition after transition. So thank you very much to all of you. Uh, to our liturgical ministers, our ushers, our, our uh, Eucharistic ministers, our lectors who made the scriptures come alive this week, our servers, our musicians, uh, our presiders, and you know, a special thank you for our, our musicians this week. They just helped us so thank you so much. I talk about weeks, but they've been doing, working at this for months. So um, Eddie and uh, Deacon Eddie and uh, Mary Roma, wherever you are, there you are, uh, our head catechists who, who walked with our, our uh, candidate. Well, now they're all Catholics, our new Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much for your companionship to all of them. Um, and to those of you... Uh, who were initi initiated tonight. Again, I've said this across the weeks. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a great gift that you all give to us here at St. Ignatius Parish. I assure you of our love and our support as you continue your journey. Wherever that may be, uh, don't disappear. If you're in the area, let us register for St. Ignatius. If you live elsewhere, register there. The church needs you and, you, and you, your witness um, every Sunday. So thank you. Um, and finally, I, I just want to thank uh, the staff, uh, a, a remarkably generous staff, lay and Jesuit, uh, Eddie and uh, Deacon, as well as Deacon Eddie, all of whom enabled these days, the front of the house and back of the house. I'm grateful. It was a great sense of team this week, so I'm really great. Pat Stacy, I always forget Pat. Pat is, um, for those of you at home, he's the one who's helping you to see it. He's been here for three years, so Pat, very grateful. And I would be really remiss, um, there's so many, we, they all work so hard, but I would be terribly remiss if I did not um, single out our director of worship by name, whose vision, attention to detail, generosity, hard work, and her faith in Jesus uh, brought it all to fruition. So Maggie Warner, thank you so very much. So thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we're here every Sunday. We hope to see you then. Um, and may the graces of yours uh, be, well, the graces of Easter be yours throughout the Easter season. Um, we have one quick announcement from uh, someone who went through all of this last year, uh, Jill Salick. Hi there. I want to invite everyone to come to the back of the church where the um, St. Ignatius has tables with a feast ed, similar to what um, you know we experienced last year, and it's just a beautiful time to welcome all of you and to have some food and drink. So please come back and enjoy with us. And uh, the new Catholics will be back there, so you can greet them personally. Please stand. The Lord be with you. <laughs> Lift your eyes to the heavens and pray for God's blessing. We have four amens.
May Almighty God bless us through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend us from every assault of darkness and sin. Amen. Amen. And may the one who restores us to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow us with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may we who celebrate with joy the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in the spirit to that feast that is celebrated for eternity. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come upon all of us and remain with us forever. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is risen today can be found on page 20 of your order of worship. <laughs> 